Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So in today's lesson, we're going to be discussing amino acid catabolism. So let's just jump right on in. Okay, so we know that we have about 20 common amino acids. So 20 common amino acids. Now, all 20 of the pathways for amino acid catabolism for breakdown all converge to six major products. So all 20 pathways ways converge to only six major products. So when an amino acid breaks down, all of those 20, there's only one of six things that it ultimately becomes and all of them enter the citric acid cycle. Pathways converge to only six major products. Okay, so we have alpha ketoglutarate. We have succinyl-CoA. We have fumarate. And you'll recognize these as citric acid cycle intermediates. We have oxaloacetate. We have pyruvate, and we have acetoacetyl-CoA, acetoacetyl-CoA, which actually goes on to become the ketone bodies, so not a problem. We'll be looking at that in just a second. Now let's go ahead and define just a couple of more terms associated with uh, amino acid breakdown. Uh, one of them is something called ketogenic. So we refer to a ketogenic amino acid, those that are ketogenic, well, those that degrade or break down or catabolize degrade to aceto acetyl CoA because they can go on to form ketone bodies in the liver and go on to form ketone bodies. Remember when we discussed ketone bodies earlier? Ketone bodies, <clears throat> excuse me, in the liver. So those are called ketogenic amino acids. They tend to ultimately produce ketone bodies. And then we have the glucogenic. And it's exactly what you think. The glucogenic amino acids are those that degrade to oxaloacetate, ultimately. In other words, their, their final form will be oxaloacetate, okay, pyruvate, pyruvate, or the other molecules mentioned above, or the other molecules which become oxaloacetate, which become oxaloacetate via the citric acid cycle. because they go on to form glucose. They go on to form glucose in gluconeogenesis. So ketogenic amino acids, glucogenic amino acids. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a, um, at a diagram of amino acid catabolism. So we'll spend a couple of minutes on this and just sort of get a sense of what's going on. So let's look at the legend here. Um, these amino acids are listed around here. And as you see, this is the citric acid cycle. Here is oxaloacetate, citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA. Back up here, here's where acetyl-CoA from pyruvate comes into the citric acid cycle. So the uh, amino acids that are in red, those are the glucogenic amino acids. So right here, arginine, proline, histidine, glutamine, 
these go break down into this this ultimately goes to oxaloacetate oxaloacetate here can follow this path to become glucose glucogenic these others glucogenic 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 notice the ones in purple uh, I'm sorry the ones in green those are strictly ketogenic so the leucine and the lysine are strictly ketogenic. When they break down, they break down to acetoacetate, acetyl-CoA, uh, and then they will go on to form their, uh, th they'll go on to form ketone bodies. So these are the ones that are strictly uh, ketogenic. Now, the ones in purple, they're both glucogenic and ketogenic. So the phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan. Notice here tyrosine, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is going to be the molecule that we're actually going to uh, talk about specifically in a little bit. We're going to follow its breakdown in detail. Um, the isoleucine, uh, the isoleucine here. So again, you can have amino acids that are both glucogenic and ketogenic. So this is a nice thing to just, you know, sort of try to wrap your mind around just to see where things are going. And again, you have your, your, your fundamental molecules that you're breaking down into, the alpha-ketoglutarate, the succinyl-CoA, the fumarate, oxaloacetate. These break down into pyruvate. These will break down into acetoacetate. That's it. This is just a centralized picture of amino acid catabolism. Okay. Now, uh, before we discuss the breakdown of actually one or two of these amino acids, I wanted to look at some of the enzyme cofactors that are involved in amino acid catabolism. Okay, specifically the one carbon transfers. So let's go ahead and list some of these. Uh, let me go ahead and stay with red. <clears throat> so cofactors. that play a role that play a role in amino acid catabolism. Okay, there is biotin. We've come across biotin before. There's tetrahydrofolate. There's tetrahydrofolate. Okay, H4 folate, you'll often see it abbreviated that way. And there is S, adenosyl methionine. Adenosyl methionine. Methionine. Okay, so again, these uh, cofactors, they're involved in the transfer of one carbon groups, but the carbons are in different oxidation states. So, these cofactors, they transfer one carbon groups in different, well, let me actually write it over here, in different oxidation states.